Hi friends, welcome to the kitchen and today let's cook something that looks really really nice but also relatively simple to cook. This recipe was inspired by the forks over knives, veggie stuffed bell peppers. I have made a couple of replacements here and there so you can make some adjustments if you like to make them and that you don't have to try it all yourself. I will link the original recipe in the description box down below, but overall I'm going to take you through the process and I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. As usual, any references are going to be linked down below and moreover, I'm going to link the timestamps. So if you're a little bit tired of me talking, you can just fast forward to the part where the cooking actually starts. And now let's just move straight into it. Okay, so the recipe does require some preparation. The original recipe is calling for instant brown rice, but if you don't have it and I have no clue what it is and where to get it, I would actually pre-cook some brown rice until it's not very soft and then use it in the cooking process so it can come to the point of the cooked brown rice. <laughs> I'm very eloquent today. Another point that you would need to take care of and is if you are not using canned beans, if you prefer to cook beans. And this is what I personally find to be the most convincing way to cook stuff is to pre-soak and pre-cook beans. Here I cooked mung beans. They're very nice, very small, quite flavorful, very kind of moldable when they're cooked. You can have your own choice of legumes or beans but in the recipe they're calling for black beluga lentils which i did not have i also did not have raisins i don't like sweet stuff inside vegetables especially when raisins get rehydrated and they expand and when you bite there is like sound but you do you and if you do prefer some raisins you can add some raisins there I'm going to be cooking in order to fill six bell peppers. You can use bell peppers of different colors. I wouldn't like to use green bell peppers here because they're less sweet, less flavorful in my opinion. They're more kind of refreshing when you chew on them, when you bite on them. But for this recipe, I would prefer from yellow to red bell peppers. Everything in this range from yellow to orange to red. You can see a really huge zucchini here and I'm not going to use all of it. I'm just going to use some and basically you just have to make the mixture and see how it goes. So get ready to cook some zoodles or maybe some salad after you have the leftovers. The original recipe is not calling for any spices, but here I think you can experiment with more spices. And in the end, I'm going to talk about it in the review section. I believe this recipe can benefit from a little bit more flavor. We have our aromatics, we have onion, we have garlic, we have some herbs, I'm using parsley, and we're going to use some mint. Mint gives this dish a little bit of a different twist in terms of the flavor. Also, you may be using instant brown rice, if you know what it is, I had no clue. I wanted to cook it with bulgur, I bought something and it was burgol. Google doesn't have the word for it, but basically burgol or bulgur is a grain from the ancient Middle East. Bulgur is steamed, pre-cooked, and like cracked wheat. Burgol does, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it does look a little bit different. Let me show you. It's made of wheat, same with bulgur. So this is how it looks like. As you see, the grains are kind of small. If you have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, don't you dare eat bulgur or burgal. Don't you dare. And of course, as I already said, we need to prep some beans. You would like to have them. I would prefer for the texture to have tinier beans so they're not standing out in the inside the bell pepper too much but overall you're free to choose whatever beans you like i would say mung beans black lentils black turtle beans would feel quite nice in there because they do have quite a lot of flavor and texture as well of course we would like to prepare everything in advance to ease our cooking process and to not freak out when something needs to go onto the pan we of course start with uh, chopping or smashing some garlic. 
cutting some onion, dicing some onion. I prefer to have it smaller in size, the pieces of the onion, because as I already mentioned, it all goes inside the bell pepper. So I want it to be as smooth and as possible with some standing out pieces of the mung beans. When I'm chopping parsley, I'm just chopping it quite roughly, but I mean, the process is rough, but I'm trying to make the pieces of parsley as small as possible. Moreover, if you don't like to feel the stems inside your meal, you might want to remove the stems or do not cut too much of the stem. One other option is that you can cook the stems together with aromatics. This will add to the flavor and they were going to be, of course, softer because they're cooked first and they're cooked more. While I'm cutting mint, I'm trying not to bruise the leaves too much. This is not the freshest mint, but nevertheless, I still do prefer to keep some of the juices inside. When I'm saying not bruise, is just if you tear it apart, it's going to release some of the flavor a little bit too early in the process. So you would like to uh, be a little bit more gentle with it. Same thing applies to basil. I'm going to touch upon it later, but basil will also be really nice in here, I think. The original recipe did not call for any specific spices or herbs that you can use in the dry form. However, I assume this would have been a little bit bland, which I do not really prefer. I prefer a little bit of a richer flavor. Moreover, I have really a lot of spices to use, a lot of them, just a massive amount of spices in my cupboard. So I do prefer to use them. And I'm going to start with some coriander, some smoked paprika. When it comes to smoked paprika, I'm usually quite generous with it because I love it. I love the flavor. I like the whole roasted feeling that it does help create. Then I'm following up with some basil, which is dried basil. You can use oregano, you can use thyme. I don't like thyme too much. It gives me this earthy feeling. I'm trying to incorporate it in some of the meals, like for example, when I'm roasting some garlic. But in general, thyme is not my favorite herb. We got some smoked paprika. We can also have some hot paprika to add a little bit of a chilliness, a little bit of a spiciness to the dish. Because otherwise, as I'm telling you, it's going to be bland. You're not going to enjoy it as much. You will need to add way more salt to feel something out of this meal. Um, just, just add some spices. That was a little bit much, but I didn't need a spoon for that. And a touch of granulated black pepper is going to bring out even more flavor. If you think about stuffed bell peppers, normally you would have meat inside and this would have some black pepper in it as well. So just to bring out the flavor a little bit, this is something that you might find interesting. If you're transitioning to a plant-based diet, you might find some meat flavorings, meat flavoring is cube, like beef flavor. You might add it in as well. It's going to add the flavor and the flavoring is also vegan, surprise. So now aromatics prepared, herbs prepared, zucchini diced and uh, all the herbs are also ready, all the spices, the flavor mix. It's time to chop off the tops of those bell peppers. Keep the tops and just scoop out the seeds. And I want to warn you, I didn't pay attention to the fact that you need to use an oven and you actually need to cover the bell peppers. I was just so ecstatic about this idea of getting some stuffed bell peppers done that I didn't pay attention to the fact that you would actually need to wrap or cover your bell peppers. So if you have aluminum foil, although I haven't done my research, but I heard people talk about the harm that aluminum foil might do to your health. I'm using aluminum trays here because I didn't have any other baking forms or baking shapes to hold the uh, bell pepper. My tray, as you can see, my baking sheet is very flat. So if you need to cover the bell peppers, I would neither 
either need to wrap each one of them separately. If you have any idea of how to do it in a better fashion, please leave your comment down below. <laughs> so we are ready to start with the cooking process. Finally, we are here. The first batch is of course our aromatic spices and uh, instant brown rice. Don't know what it is or burgal, bur bulgur. Uh, so you can simmer it all together. I'm trying to not use oil in my cooking. I feel like it helps me with weight management. They are quite calorie dense, but less nutrient dense. So I prefer to avoid oils. I find that it helps me personally, but you do you and uh, you do your own research. I highly encourage that. Reduce the heat to medium and then we can cover it and simmer for around 10 to 12 minutes. Beware, simmer, not boil. Batch number two, mung bean, zucchini, herbs, and a little bit of lime or lemon juice, but just keep the rest for the end of the process. And we're just going to simmer it all together and mix it and cook it a little bit, not too much. We are ready to get onto the process of stuffing the bell peppers. Stuff them babies, they look so nice. Just remember to keep the tops, don't throw the tops off. They're going to be kind of a nice addition. I, I think they do add to the cooking process, of course, but it also looks really, really nice. Honestly, this is just such a satisfying process when you stuff your bell peppers. You push all the fillings inside and then you just put the tops on. I did have some filling left over and I just ate it like that as a salad. Adding a little bit of water, adding a little bit of lime or lemon juice, and then seeing the struggle covering the bell peppers with some uh, baking paper. But anyway, here we all done, and now we're getting into the oven. 375 degrees Fahrenheit, that's around 190, 191 degrees Celsius. Of course, the oven should be preheated, I don't think I have to mention this, but we are going to need around one hour of time to cook it through. After one hour, it's time to evaluate the results. Man, it looks so satisfying when you take the top off the bell pepper and everything is just steaming inside. It's so pretty. Some of my tops got more burnt than other tops. You do not want to eat the burnt parts, but it does add to the overall look of the bell pepper. I honestly like how it looks. Probably doesn't show the level of professionalism in the kitchen as one can demonstrate, but I find it looks pretty amazing. For the storage, you can always put them in a container and I stored my bell peppers for around a week in a fridge. When you reheat them, uh, we call it the sauna. You're kind of creating this experience inside the saucepan where you add a little bit of water. I'm not quite sure of the term, if you can help me with that. You add a little bit of water and you let it simmer and you close the lid so the steam kind of heats up the insides of the food that you're cooking. I guess you can also use a microwave. I don't own a microwave. I don't find it very necessary. And let's rate this recipe on easiness, versatility, what, what you can add, a replacement substitutes, texture and flavor. So I'm going to take these four points into consideration when I'm going to give my final judgment. So in terms of easiness, I wouldn't call it a very easy recipe. I wouldn't give it five out of five. You do definitely need to have an oven and at least one and a half hours of your time. You would also need to pre-prep the beans or you would need to get the beans that you trust. Uh, but I, as I already mentioned, I do believe in cooking the beans myself. Uh, so I know how they are being pre-processed before they're actually cooked to increase the protein bioavailability, iron bioavailability, which I am currently targeting as my health target. Moreover, I didn't try how it would work with brown rice, normal brown rice or with just white rice. I would assume you, you would need to pre-cook it and then just Go ahead with it uh, in the oven, but this is just my assumption. Please don't quote me on that. I do not know what instant brown rice is. I already mentioned it maybe like three times. Uh, but at the same time, I do feel that if you 
nail it, it's going to be a little bit better on the texture side because you're going to have firmer pieces inside. So yeah, in terms of easiness, uh, I would give it 3.5 and 3 out of 5 because um, given the time, given the prep time, it's not something that you cook under 30 minutes. You might need to search for some of the ingredients, so I would definitely give it a 3.5 out of 5. Versatility of the recipe, how many ingredients you can use, how many ingredients you can substitute. Here I would go with um, with the 4 out of 5 just because there is this restriction for me that you would need to know how the grain will perform when you're cooking it in the oven, which we do not do very typically. Like you might not have an instant brown rice available all the time. Uh, you might not have things like couscous or bourgol or bulgur but bulgur is different you can be replacing herbs with the herbs that you like you can be replacing the beans with the beans that you like so generally you do have some room for experiment but also does depend of whether or not you would want to stuff it with some carbohydrate of your preference from the texture perspective for me it's a three out of five i think the way i cooked it the way i cooked it but speaking of the versatility, how can you increase the texture? When I was cooking it, I was really called to, call, uh, to add some tofu. Uh, it might be really nice. You can also play around with the uh, texturized soy protein. Is it called texturized uh, vegetable protein, TVP? It's called textured vegetable protein. In my case, those are soy chunks. Um, you can play around with those, you can soak them or for around 20 minutes or boil them for around 10 minutes. Um, they do have a little bit of a flavor which some people find unpleasant, I find it fine. Uh, so this will add a little bit of chewiness to the insides of the bell pepper. Moreover, when you mash it or wear it, tear it apart with your hands, it will remind you of meat texture and a little bit of a flavor, it does absorb flavor really well. So if you are someone who is struggling with a transition from a plant-based diet, but you still want some protein in, uh, then um, you might want to consider adding in something like this. Walnuts can be great there for this bite. Uh, they will not uh, become very soft, of course. They will still have the bite and they will merge in with the flavor profile of this dish perfectly fine but the way i cooked it right now i would give it three out of five let's leave some room for the experiment flavor speaking of the original recipe i wouldn't know how it would rank for me but i would assume it's going to be a two out of five uh, because there are herbs so there are there is some flavor in it there is some taste from the bell pepper there is some taste from the beans however the original recipe is definitely lacking some spices so if you go with the spices that i went with i would probably rate it as 3.5 out of 5. Um, i would add a little bit more chili and i think flavor does talk to the texture bit so if you add a little bit of texture you would also enjoy the flavor a little bit more at least in my case so um, overall I would add a little, a little bit more chilies a little bit more black pepper it does require a little bit of seasoning and if you feel like it you might add a little bit of salt so it does feel a little bit more natural or not under salted on your palate so overall, let's give it 3.5 out of 5. Will I cook it again? Yes, but with the modifications that I talked about previously, I would try to add some textured vegetable protein or soy chunks in my case. I would definitely try to add some nuts in there and a little bit more flavoring. So guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been such an amazing company and I really appreciate your support. If you like this video, please give it a like, leave a comment down below. It does help videos to rank a little bit higher. And if you really feel like it, please do feel free to subscribe to the channel. It does help me more than you know. We are a small family here, but I hope it will be growing in the nearest future.
If you have any suggestions of what else you would like me to try out and cook from any website like forks over knives, if you want to see some recipe reviews, please let me know. If you want to connect, please join me on my Instagram. I'm a little bit less frequent there these days, but I'm trying to post the meatiest part of the nutritional information there. And I'm trying to give you tips on how to make the most out of your meals to enhance your health. But please do remember that I'm not a licensed health professional. I'm just very much into nutrition. Please do your own research. And I do hope that my videos are going to inspire you to eat a little bit of more greens today and advocate for your health. So thank you so much for joining once again and I see you very soon.